tonight had hoped to be heading to Washington come January. Economist David Malpass was one of three candidates for the U.S. Senate seat that is now currently held by Kirsten Gillibrand, and he was narrowly defeated by Joe Diaguardi in the GOP primary in September. But since then, he's been quite busy. He campaigned for several congressional candidates, and last week he launched an online petition to stop the Federal Reserve from spending $600 billion to buy bonds. Now, that's a move he says would actually hurt small businesses. And here to talk more about the petition and what might be, be behind his public push is David Malpass. He's joining us tonight from New York City. David, thanks very much for being with us. Hi, Liz. Good to be on. So let's start with this uh, Fed online petition that you have. It's actually in conjunction with a letter that you said to Ben Bernanke, along with uh, almost two dozen other economic experts. Uh, could you just uh, explain to us what's behind this? Yes, the Fed's really expanding rapidly, and it hurts the economy by taking money from banks, and the Fed decides to put it into bonds. And so it's really just an expansion of the Federal Reserve in Washington, D.C., and it's hard to see how that's good for jobs in New York State. Uh, so I did a letter at the beginning of uh, uh, last week uh, that, that was joined by a lot of people, and we, we asked the Fed to reconsider it and wind it down, uh, stop doing this asset purchasing. Uh, and now I've got an online petition that people can sign. It's at growpack.com. Um, what exactly did the chairman say to you? Have you heard a response back yet? Well, he was in the news all last week he, giving formal speeches on why he should he wanted to continue uh, buying assets. But as you looked at his arguments, uh, they weren't very strong on job creation. They were mostly on the idea that they were going to make money cheaper for big corporations and for the government. And again, I don't see how that helps small businesses in New York. That's, that's my focus. You know, what's interesting here, as I look down the list of people who sign, I see Dan Sr.'s name. He's uh, obviously he's a uh, Council, uh, Council of Foreign Relations co-author. He also was a Bush advisor, and he was mentioned as a potential U.S. Senate candidate. He's still mentioned as a potential U.S. Senate candidate, uh, as are you in 2012. But have you spoken to Dan Sr. at all about that? Oh, yes. We've been working together on, on this effort uh, with Paul Singer, and, uh, and then John Taylor was involved as well. He's a former Bush administration uh, official. You know, I worked in the Reagan administration and in Bush 41. Uh, so in a way, this uh, letter spans 30 years of Republican economic officials. Michael Boskin is on the letter and others. But there, is there a possibility, do you think, that you and Dan Sr. could end up being opponents in 2012? You know, I'm focused on the, on the issues. Uh, we've dug a deep hole uh, in, in the fiscal policy of the country, both in Albany and Washington. So as you know, I've been interested in working on the issues for really 20 years. So I'm going to keep doing that and not really worry about 2012. I, I, I really want to see Washington stop growing and Albany begin to straighten itself out. And those are huge challenges. So you created this pack, Grow Pack, as you mentioned. Do you know how much you've spent? Because it's not online yet. You actually backed a number of congressional candidates, and you did pretty well. You 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 uh, bought some radio ads. You did well in New York 19, in New York 24, in New York 20. Looks like maybe in New York 25. New York one still up in the air. Uh, you didn't do so great in New York 23, but that's not such a bad uh, record right there. I was, you know, I was really happy with both our picks of, it, of candidates to endorse. We wanted fiscal conservatives on the idea that they should win this year. This is a desperate fiscal situation. Uh, and so we backed seven candidates. Uh, three of them won outright, and two more are in these tight vote counts. So Anne-Marie Burkle, I'm very happy to see her um, making progress. It looks like uh, she'll win. She's ahead by 500 votes. And I feel like uh, yeah, I, I, our pack made the difference. We were running uh, ads aggressively in her area. And so that brought in some votes, and I'm proud of that. Do you know how much you spent in the, at the end of the day? You did radio and not TV, which tends to be a little on the cheaper side. That's right. And so, uh, you know, it, 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 was, uh, it was good radio ad buys. So we were buying Rush Limbaugh and other kinds of uh, conservative uh, radio 
uh, uh, media, and that seems to have worked. You know, a lot of people have told me they heard it, uh, and it was timely. One of the things I was glad we were able to do was get the ads into the media market in the in the week prior, in the days prior to the election, when it had the most impact, and we got our buys done, which also was good. And uh, then, you know, I've turned now to this petition on the Fed, so we're rolling right from the support of candidates, fiscally conservative candidates, to fiscally conservative issues. That's it's growpack.com, and so we're hoping that people will be aware of it and join in, and uh, you know we can get a big team effort going to try to stop Washington. Do you know though? I mean, is it in the six-figure range that you spent? When we'll be getting the report soon. I'm just curious if you could give us a number. I, I, I don't think it'll be in the six-figure range, uh, but they, you know, they were well-placed media buys, and I'm, I'm very proud of the results that we got. So, David, this is what people do usually when they are interested in keeping their name in the news. First of all, A, they build up chits with candidates who then later will come back and perhaps support them. And then, B, they do policy initiatives, which is what you've moved GROWPAC into doing. So i, I got to ask, I mean, you, are you ruling out 2012? Kirsten Gilbert has to run again in 2012. Are you interested? Uh, uh, what I'm interested in is, is uh, more jobs in New York and people in New York. I've been disappointed in what she's she's already back in Washington, and so we're only what it's a couple weeks since the election, and she's already started voting for big government expansions, uh, uh, basically a rubber stamp with uh, Senator Schumer, uh, and so that's disappointing. But for me, I'm I'm really trying to push these policy ideas. There's huge. Uh, obstacles to growth going on uh, in in New York State, and that's mostly what I want to work on. You know, I also have my economic. I'm an economist and have my economic research business, right. which is pretty much full time job. I'm president of Insema Global, so I'm doing that as well. That's uh, that's all I've got time for, and and my family. Okay, but I don't hear no. I'm just saying, are you still have an interest in in some kind of public service? Uh, I, you know, Liz, I ran for a reason in 2010 because I'm really concerned, deeply concerned about the direction that we're heading with policy. So I'm going to uh, explore options. Mostly what I'm doing is trying to have an impact on the policies uh, and also uh, uh, the economic analysis that's going on. If you look at what's happening in Albany, we have a $9 billion fiscal deficit. And so it's going to take uh, Governor, uh, Governor Cuomo, when he's in office, will have to be working you know extra hard and focused to try to slow down some of the expansion of the of the pensions uh, for example I'd like to see more concrete uh, proposals from him on that and they'll also have to go one by one on on spending cuts it, you know if 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 he, he I don't expect him to call but uh, I'd be it, I've got lots of ideas on how they can do a better job fiscally in Albany and I'm just hoping that they'll grapple with these issues well then why not run for at the state level? I, you actually, he has some report, uh, Republicans on his team, so it's not like you never know, right? I mean, he's he's filling staffing positions now. But what? Why not then uh, seek a, a state level position if, in fact, you think that you could actually have some ideas about how to fix the state? Sure. Well, you know, he hasn't called. If he called, I'd be happy to take the call and <laughs> and have ideas on what they could be doing. But I, I'm I'm not I'm not really looking for that or expecting it. What I want to do is lay out ideas. You know, the if we take the pension uh, crisis that we really have, I think it's vital that New York State uh, adopt a 401k plan for new uh, government workers, mm. so that we can get out of this lifetime pension. Crisis that we're that we're facing, uh, I, it, with lots of the issues, I think the solution is to say, what are we doing today that's going to make it better ten years from now? You may not be able to fix the problem today, uh, but at least you can start moving us in the right direction. And my frustration is that th they keep making it worse, not better. Uh, also, a little Monday morning quarterbacking, uh, although it's a, it's more than a week, of course, after the general election. If you wouldn't mind, I'm curious if you feel that the state Republican Party didn't do enough to support you or perhaps encourage the primary where they shouldn't have because this was supposed to be this year when Republicans did very well. Kirsten Gillibrand was actually appointed and so technically speaking weak or perceived as weak and yet she won quite handily against uh, Joe Duke Wardy who defeated you in the primary. 
Yeah, I think there needed to be a very clear articulation of the difference between the candidates. Kirsten Gillibrand, Senator Gillibrand, has stood uh, for bigger government, consistently for bigger government, more spending and more taxes. And so the, the Republican positioning needed to be very crystal clear uh, on the other side of that, that we need smaller government, less spending, less taxes. And I think that didn't come through loudly enough. Uh, there's no point, I, I, you know, I'm not much of a look back. I want to look forward. And so um, making that clear distinction um, uh, as, as, as uh, decision makers uh, operate, Governor Cuomo will be making thousands of decisions and the voters will be able to look and say, hey, that one just kept, kept the status quo, kept making the government bigger. And as I say, Senator Gillibrand's already had a chance in Washington and I've been dis it's, it's hurting New York to have Washington keep spending money because it sucks money out out of New York uh, and takes it to Washington and she keeps voting for that. But as a Republican in New York, do you still have confidence in State uh, Chairman Ed Cox or do you think he should step aside and let someone else do uh, leadership for a change? You know, I've never run for office before, and I'm not so much in the in the political establishment. So I'm going to let those guys, uh, so, you know, sort it out a bit. I want to keep focused, as my organization stands for, in in trying to have issues that make the government smaller. There's this very important uh, uh, process that needs to go on in New York of of the conservative party, which is a critical part of our state politics, working uh, and 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 the Republican Party working together to find really good candidates. And so, in a way, that's they'll be operating there, and I'm going to be kind of hammering on the issues, the smaller government issues that I think are so important. Okay, just though, because during a YNN and New York One debate prior to the September 14th primary, you did say you, you, you didn't think that Ed Cox had done such a great job. I was just curious if from the primary to the general, that changed for you. You know, that was my opinion on that night in a lightning round answer. And so I, I think uh, Ed had a lot of impact, positive impact, as, as we led up to November 2. So I'm really not eager to get into that debate. I want other people to sort that out and then to begin thinking about how the Republican and conservative parties in New York can come up with unified, strong candidates uh, as we go into 2012. The, the countries in this very big fiscal crisis. If you, you've seen what's going on in Ireland, and mm. there's shades of that as we think about New York State. We're big, New York State is bigger than Ireland, and with by many, many times bigger, and with bigger problems. And so, as as you look at the problems spreading, uh, we've got to work every day really hard uh, in order to create a better state. So that's where my energies are going. Okay, we're David Malpass, former U.S. Senate candidate. I want to thank you very much. I'm sure we'll be hearing more from you soon. Be well. Thanks, Liz.